Welcome to the Low Vision for Sub-Saharan Africa lecture series. These lectures are designed by the World's Optometry Postgraduate Education Center and the Optometry Department of Malawi College of Health Sciences. I am Dr. Abraham and I'll be taking you through this session. Through the previous lectures, we have had a fair idea of what low vision is and its causes. We have also looked at how it affects the lives of individuals and the community as a whole. What we have tried to do so far is to describe the magnitude of the problem and the burden it presents. Today we shift into investigative mode. If we will need to be able to provide appropriate solutions to people with visual impairment, then we need to get to know them a bit more and understand their peculiar challenges and needs. This lecture will therefore look at certain goals, which is the first most important step in initiating the process of assessing a person living with low vision. Do not forget to go to our website at www.wopec.co.uk to register for the opportunity to get a certificate for this course. You would have to answer some few MCQs. The URL on this slide will lead you straight to the registration page. Remember your prefix will be WOPEC and your code is 1234. You will need your prefix and code to be able to register. Your prefix is WOPEC and your code is 1234. Low vision assessment begins at goal setting, which would provide us enough information to go through the assessment of visual function and eventually help in deciding on which solution the client would need. Goal setting is composed of case history, need assessment, and task analysis. It is important for both the practitioner and the client to know that low vision is about rehabilitation and not restoration. Before any assessment begins, the practitioner must make sure the client has very good understanding of what the session will be about and also would have realistic expectations. The client should be very motivated and ready to work with you to be able to achieve set goals. This would mean any signs of depression or other related issues should be addressed or referred to other partners who would be able to manage it. It is always great to set off on a good note and your statement should always be wrapped around teamwork. So comments like, today we will be looking at how I can help you to use your vision to accomplish tasks are the kind of statement that is expected from the practitioner. When the foundations have been set and you believe you have a good understanding of each other, the next step is to get to know your client. This includes making sure you observe them critically during the period they will be in your consulting room. You would have to take case history and do task analysis. You will need to observe the client as he walks into your clinic, whether he has any facial or body wounds or scars. It may help you to have a good idea of the degree of visual impairment and if that visual impairment exposes him or her to possible dangers. Other things you may want to observe is whether they are able to fill any forms given them, whether they are able to use any electronic gadgets and if they use a centrifugation or have a hair tilt. Look out for the presence of speech difficulties and whether the client is able to combine colors nicely when it comes to his or her clothing. An important thing to observe is whether there are any guardians who brought him or her along and how dependent they are on these guardians to be able to navigate through your office or practice. All this, all this information would give you a all this information will give you a rough idea of the kind of visual function assessment you may have to concentrate on and the solutions that may be required. The next step in the process is to take your client's case history. If the client brought along some previous records or you can have access to them, it will be a good time to review these records. If this is not available, it will be great to ask the client to give you some information about his visual impairment, like the cause, when it started rates of progression, etc. If the client is unable to give you that information, you may have to ask the guardian if there is any. Nevertheless, you may not at any point let the client feel he or she is being ignored. At regular intervals, try to obtain confirmation from him or her on whatever you are being told. A good case history should be able to gather enough information to give a good description of the person's view of his visual impairment and how it affects his or her life. Be aware that some clients get carried away with the conversation 
and may end up giving you a complete recipe of pounded yam and negoshi stew or discuss with you the problems his daughters or sons are facing in their marriage. When that happens, try to find a nice way to get back on track. I may often excuse myself for about 30 seconds to add to a non-existent issue and return with my preferred conversation. It is often rare for a low vision practitioner to be the first point of contact for the client. Often they may have had some experience with other eye care providers. Therefore, you should know if the client has previous prescriptions and make sure they are all facilitated. Ask them for the ones that give them their best vision and use those ones to take their visual acuity. For symmetrying all the glasses would also give you an idea of the rate of progression of vision loss. If the client has had poor vision for a long time, they may possibly be using some magnifiers. It is also good to know the kind of magnifiers they use and how they use them. There is also the need to know how they are able to move around and do their daily activities at home. In our previous lecture, we outlined how family support is important for people living with low vision. And therefore, knowing about whether they have family support at home and whether that family support is reliable is very important. If they have children who come in once a month to do laundry and the rest of the days there is no one at home, that does not sound like a very good support system. In some local communities, children provide support for elderly people and will come to their houses to help them clean and cook. Governmental support is often very limited and poorly coordinated in most low to middle income countries. However, it is good to know if your client has any of such support because some agencies will be willing to pay for their health and get them the appropriate aid. And a good family support and having people at home will be essential in achieving good results from the rehabilitation process. Throughout, you need to make sure the conversation is lively. Get your clients laughing or smiling if you can. It brings down anxiety and it helps build trust. The next on the list is to try to identify the kind of things the person uses his vision for, which we term the need assessment. The practitioner can ask questions like, what are the things you used your vision for before you lost your eyesight? Can you tell me the things you can use your vision for now? What are the things you really like to do but you can't? These questions help you identify the specific needs and the activities your client would want to engage in. Clients are likely to give you a whole list of activities including cooking, using a mobile phone, reading labels on their medication, watching TV and so many other things. Based on the activities mentioned, you would have to help your client to order them according to a priority scale. The next step is to analyze the task and find out the minimum visual acuity and contrast sensitivity that is required to be able to do that task. If the task is unfamiliar to you, then it is advisable to let the patient bring that task or activity to the hospital so that you can have a look at it and be able to estimate these parameters yourself. If the person tells you he would want to read, that is not enough information. You would have to find out what exactly he or she would like to read. Reading tags vary considerably. Like the book on the top right require very fine VA and contrast throughout, whilst the one below, which is a mobile scratch card will require very fine visual acuity to see some print, whilst other print does not need that much acute vision. The newspaper will not require very good visual acuity or contrast threshold in order to see the letters written on it. If the client wants to cook, then you should know the kind of kitchen tools he or she has and whether it's a local kitchen or a modern kitchen. Because in some local kitchen, the only source of light is sunlight and therefore as it gets darker during the day, it becomes much more difficult to function in those kitchens. And if it is a modern kitchen, you would have to deal with reading dials and reading small print as well. Lover Kitchen and Whitaker publish a set of reading tasks and their corresponding near VA required to see them. They are useful for making estimates, but it's always good to know the minimum VA and contrast levels necessary to see tasks 
that may be that may be peculiar to your community when all the analysis has been done and you know how much vision is required to do the task then the visual task the client listed out may need to be rearranged according to what is feasible without changing the client priority list as well if the client listed riding a bicycle as part of the tax then it is time to discuss with him that that may not be very achievable you will then have to move that task out or activity out of the list and then place the next activity on the priority list as the first so that you can deal with that one the practitioner will then have to choose a number of activities in this case three will be a reasonable number to start with and support the client to be able to do this task independently you may have to discuss with your client and select about two to three tasks which you can work on to be able to achieve your set goals we have come to the end of another lecture we hope it has been helpful but we should know that the investigation has just started and our next lecture will take us deeper into some of the procedures. Do not forget to log on to our website at www.wopec.co.uk and register for the opportunity to get a certificate for yourself. Your prefix will be WOPEC and your code will be 1234. We give special thanks to Dr. Barbara Ryan the director of WOPEC and Mr. Mare Karaz, the low vision module leader at WOPEC for their contribution to this work. I'll be waiting to welcome you to the next lecture.